Do you know items? Do you? See team ya mpira. Kweli team. You know T I M S. You know when you ask, I was about to ask you. Are they in our Super League or are they in the Premier League? Are they playing in Afco? Yes. Electronic tax invoice management system. Okay. Yes. With Kerry. Now we're joined by Hakamba Wangwe. She is the chief manager for ITIMS, the electronic tax invoice management system at the Kenya Revenue Authority. Good morning, Hakamba. Morning to you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. Uh, thank you very much. Karibu sana. Thank you for sana. having me here. Uh, City will welcome you with the day's problem. Every week, City goes to one African country. Okay. He brings us every day a different proverb from that country. Okay. And then we ask our guests to give us their interpretation of that proverb. This week, the proverbs are from the Republic of Kenya. You know that country? Yes. Yeah, the taxpayers of that country are called Wahenga. <laughs> Everybody else is not a taxpayer. <laughs> now, the Wahenga came up with a proverb, City. Yes, uh -huh. and the proverb was actually in Swahili. Mm. So the opportunity the guest has is translated into English and then now tell us what he thinks, she thinks. It means, mm. Chura haina manyoya. Chura haina manyoya. Mm. A frog does not have fur. Mm -hmm. Fur. Yes. Oh, fur. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, feathers is okay. Feathers. feathers. Okay, but fur is good. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. mm. What's your interpretation of it? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Same boat, sis. Oh, well. I was, I was, it's obvious. Uh, mm. uh, it's, it's, it's not obvious. Mm. Is that really a proverb? Chura <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Can I spice it up for you so that it sounds like a, a proverb? Yes. Mm. Once upon a time, there was a frog. The <laughs> end. <laughs> 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 there are proverbs that sound like proverbs because they are lengthy and they are cryptic. Mm. But proverbs are just sayings. Yeah. Yes. They are meant to highlight something that is sometimes obvious, but then it isn't obvious to someone. So when you say it, it becomes, oh, but isn't it obvious that this is so? Okay. okay. Yes. So uh, my interpretation of it, I think... Uh, uh, is that we have to treat a situation as it comes. So if you know how to skin, uh, for example, or to to de, like de feather a, a chicken, if you are talking about feathers, or to remove a fur from an animal, then for a frog, what it does is leap. So if you need to treat it, then you need to look at their circumstance and treat it accordingly. I don't know. Good. It's very good. Wow. wow. It's good. That's deep. Wow. That's very good. Mm. Mm. That's, that's a good interpretation. No, that's an excellent interpretation. Asante, Asante. Excellent. Asante. But that interpretation has left out people who eat frogs. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they won't quite treat that proverb the same way, but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> but well, this is excellent. Thank it, you. It means for them it's easier. Yes, it's much, much easier. They don't have to start by defeathering. No. Yeah. Before they. You just proceed. Yeah, they go straight to proceed. <laughs> 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 Electronic tax invoice management system. What is it, Hakamba? It's just that electronic tax invoice management system. Now, um, basically, it's a step above what uh, we've been doing as, as taxpayers. I'm going to count myself as a taxpayer. Yes. Where, uh, when it I comes hope you are. I am. Oh, of course, good. I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you have to uh, uh, account for your tax liability, anytime you need to support your tax liability, you have to have the records of transaction. Uh, for example, your sales records, you need your purchase records to be able to say really when I say my liability is 30,000 shillings it's because I have these purchases I have these sales and and that's why I was able to determine how much my tax liability is now it's something that we have been doing over time because the law has required us to do that in any form we have been doing that some have been doing it manually maintaining a record of their transaction some have been having the electronic billing systems depending on their level of technology now the taxman is saying we have not caught up so now we, we need to catch up so that we, we get to where technology has gotten globally in terms of uh, revenue admi administration and uh, where technology has gotten globally is to uh, automate that process so that instead of relying on 
varied ways of maintaining these records then we are trying to standardize then we are trying to use technology to become more efficient so that's where electronic tax invoice management uh, has gotten us to and it's a journey that uh, honestly we started with uh, the VAT registered taxpayers back in 2005 mm -hmm. when we introduced the ETR devices mm -hmm. Th that was the attempt to getting there but when it came to the real time approach we took a bit long but in the past two years you know vat registered taxpayers right now are already on that platform and are transmitting their invoices mm -hmm. now um, that brought us to the next level where uh, for accounting for vat we've been able to achieve this much uh, why don't we extend the same uh, approach as as is for best practice to income tax uh, registered taxpayers so beginning september the, uh, this is the, the introduction of electronic tax invoice management taxpayers for taxpayers who are not registered for vat and that means it's the entire population let us go back into this etr system and how it worked and whom uh, it affected and then i will come into e-teams and understand so who else is it gonna be um, netting okay so etr what was it ETR, That's uh, a gadget. Yes, yeah. mm. yes. So it was the, the electronic fiscal devices that we were using. Basically, yes, the, the gadgets. You mm. talk about the Android devices. Uh, basically, handheld devices. Uh, what we were trying to achieve with that was that we had a segment of our VAT registered taxpayers who, who didn't have any kind of system they were using for invoicing. So we were trying to introduce that that device. It's simple to use. It's, it's, it's very... It's partially manual, but it's very simple to use. They just get to generate uh, a, a receipt, and, and f at that point, it was enough. But when we introduced the tax invoice management system, what we, we were saying, with the same approach, with the same devices, can we add specifications so that now transmit those invoices to carry? Mm -hmm. So that was the second level. It was affecting the VAT registered taxpayers only. So initially, the gadget was producing a receipt. Yes. But this was not transmitting to Kerry. Was Kerry coming into contact with this information in any at any stage? Yes, yes. Uh, because again, uh, what we did for our requirements is that uh, even as we started the, the eight years, yeah. we also started op automating the care assistance. Now we started uh, implementing ITAX. Yes. Okay. So ITAX uh, got to the point of uh, being delivered uh, about by 20, 2015, we had fully delivered ITAX. But then now what we were requiring for from the eight year uh, receipts is that when you're filing your VAT return, you needed to maintain a, a, an exam template a csv file mm. populate the details of what is being generated from the etr and import into the itax system yeah. so it was kind of semi-manual and uh, our vision or our objective was to make it automatic that you open your vat return and you're able to to actually see uh, a record of those transactions actually available at the revenue authority uh, uh, already mm -hmm. so that we simplify that process so i promise to the taxpayer is uh, as we implementing these systems we also want to simplify You're the simplifying tax, the tax filing Before process you get that so this gadget Oh, everybody had to acquire the gadget. Yeah. Everybody had to register on ITAX. Mm. So every 20th, you find people doing that whole, by, th by the 20th, you are doing that whole transferring of that car receipt into the Excel and uploading it on ITAX and filing your VAT returns, okay? Mm. And then last year, Care tells everybody you have to buy a new gadget. And this new gadget now is electronic, blah, 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 this and the other. And you can even upgrade the gadget that you have. What was that all about? Now, th last year, it was the introduction of E-Teams. Okay. So, so was I it the previous year that... that yeah, but like, last year uh, two, years back, two years back. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was 2022. Okay. So in 2022, <laughs> when you're telling people to now buy the new gadgets, what was that all about? Uh, it was about obs uh, uh, technology getting obsolete. So even as we rolled out the, the devices in 205, from 205 to 2022, those devices did not have capability to maintain, uh, before, first of all, to store the amount of invoices that we, we were projecting to transmit, and we needed those invoices stored. Those devices could not transmit. Some of them could not connect to internet. So for the ones who had uh, smart devices, especially the ones on Android, all they needed to do was to upgrade. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the ones who had, th those ones we rolled out in 205, they had to buy new ones. 
So essentially, the shelf life of these gadgets is how many years? Basically, technology. When you talk, even when you talk about PCs, laptops, I think you give it a shelf life of. Uh, three years uh, for good fun functionality you can see our taxpayers used them for over 20 uh, f yeah. it, over 10 over years, 10 years. Yeah. Uh, you'll be using but there'll be so much that is being added that you yours cannot take up did Kerry take the time to inform people about this ahead of time and tell them by this date you needed to have changed and done this and the other Yes, uh, we always do that. Uh, I, I, let me just mention that uh, we started uh, the, the plan to start moving to the device-based approach teams. Mm. So we started in 2016. Mm. So from 2016, we were just in the process of development, stakeholder engagement. The law was in place from 2020. So you can see there was a lot of time that was passing for us to get ready to this implementation. Mm. Mm. And yes. in, in um, relaying this information... <coughs> Was there an opportunity to get feedback from the users of that old technology and people who are taxpayers to tell you what they thought about the information that you're giving them? Yes, again, uh, even as we were, we were putting the law in place, what we did is, uh, we are required by law, by the way, to do the public participation so that you're able to see... Um, what, what what really is the ground saying mm -hmm. and what was happening at that time because uh, uh, we had already implemented the ATR regime uh, the thought was we start from where we are and where we were is uh, the integration with the electronic fiscal devices mm -hmm. and automate that to be able to just transmit mm -hmm. invoices uh, before we can now explore what <coughs> else technology has and just feed feed it in into that implementation okay. you know, I haven't finished this thing yes. okay. may, may I continue <laughs> yes so when you had your public participation the feedback that you got, if we were to collate that information, how much did it influence then the implementation of what it is that you then put out to the public? Uh, actually, a lot, because you know what happened is that at the point, uh, you, you remember I mentioned that we started this thought in 2016. In 2016. Yes. By 2016, uh, the idea of uh, why don't we explore the different technology? Why don't we do the system-to-system -system integration? But then uh, the other feedback was, where are our taxpayers at? Where are they right now? They are at the electronic fiscal devices. So why don't we just deal with simply adding the functionality of transmitting invoices? Then before we introduce a big change that probably might be you now where we are at, at eating right now, when everyone is saying that uh, uh, probably maybe it's too much technology for the smaller taxpayers. So we were starting small, but introduce uh, the, the advanced technology as time goes by. So at least that was the feedback that we were able to to, to receive so that even as our thought process was wait a minute uh, there this, we can do the software approach we can do this we can do uh, so many other solutions but let's start by transmission first so actually that's how the decision came about okay uh, the thing about uh, I'm sure you know uh, taxes in Kenya is that even when it comes to filing taxes everybody has questions about how this would be done and so now we're at the point whereby a new technology is being introduced to folks who have no choice but to uh, make these payments. What is the fundamental difference between ETR, which has been used up until now, and e what is the difference? And for whom is this change? Is it for KRA to do its work easier? Or is there any kind of benefit for the individuals and the organizations and the companies who have to pay tax? For whom is this new technology beneficial? Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a good question because maybe even furthering the conversation mm. we've had uh, on Teams, automating the fiscal devices, by the time we rolled out, we actually realized that we were able to onboard most of the large and medium taxpayers, actually 95% mm. of large and medium taxpayers. Then we looked around, where are the small ones? And what is their problem? So what we came to discover was that... Um, the, 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 the cost of compliance was so high for the smaller taxpayers. Mm. Uh, and then now we just thought about it. The smaller taxpayers have laptops, have tablets, have uh, computers, which they are using in their cause of, of business. So what we had to introduce was the free software, which is now eTeams. Mm -hmm. And then 
flexible solutions so that um, for for example a taxpayer who is just dealing with services only all they need is to get credentials from the for for them to be able to access a revenue uh, KRA system to be able to generate uh, invoices so the flexible solutions uh, that include the mobile app the free software that can be installed on the laptops, phones, tablets, etc. The online portal that we only need credentials for served the smaller taxpayers better. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we saw uptake going up again. So in the course of 2023, most of the taxpayers who we onboarded were actually the smaller taxpayers, those ones who are registered for VAT. So come now, uh, the law coming in place and uh, us... Um, um putting it out there mm -hmm. that apart from vat registered taxpayers then those who are not registered for vat that uh, that include uh all people with business income they must be residents they must be citizens or if they are non-residents they must have permanent establishment in this country they need to support their transactions with an electronic tax invoice basically what what it is saying is that from this tax return that is going to be filed for this this current year mm. then what the taxpayers have been doing whenever they are doing their profit and loss account mm. they will declare their turnover they will declare their their expenses in one way or the other yep. so you're saying those expenses mm. they have been maintaining a record even manual ones mm -hmm. of of so to be able to support if you say that you bought machinery where are the receipts mm. yeah but but now we are saying those receipts need to be electronic tax invoices how were you able to collect collate this information prior to this e-teams technology mostly manual uh still coming back to that mostly manu manual because if we have now to to assess to do a tax assessment based on uh, taxpayers declarations mm. what would we'll be receiving some people would actually come with a pickup when they're bringing their receipts mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh it, it's not practical it's not practical so we, we we were we knew we knew this is something that we need to do have a database of this information save the taxpayers from that uh, headache of trying to find their records five years back mm -hmm. because we have the records with us mm -hmm. save ourselves the time we go and see spend at the taxpayers premises a month over trying to go through boxes and boxes of of receipts just to try to determine that this is actually matches with what the taxpayer de declared Okay, so this is a real-time process according to what you're saying. Yeah. So can we just break it down a little bit for really bite-sized understanding? I sell shoe polish, my shop full, okay? I now get the new software on my phone, eTeams, mm -hmm. and we're going to assume for the purposes of the conversation that it is seamless. I can download it, I get it on my phone, it is working, right? Eric comes to my shop today. He buys one tin of polish. At the time that he buys, on the phone, I input one shoe polish, 100 shillings. Sold. Sold. This is the amount. It automatically calculates VAT, all of those things. The receipt is also uh, a soft copy. It's in the system. I can give Eric a receipt, I can print it out, whatever, I can give him, because it allows me to do that. I can hook it up to the technology, I print a receipt, Eric has his receipt. The system, according to what you're saying then, generates a receipt that goes directly to KRA. Or does it remain in my cloud somewhere, and then on the 20th, when KRA is asking me to do all of these things, then we can collate. Or does it mean that as I'm selling, KRA is also getting my receipts and they're able to see activity. What is it? Yes, uh, but let me just qualify that. For KRA to get the receipt, mm -hmm. they need uh, the taxpayer needs to connect to internet. So yes, uh, in the process of you uh, make, making your transaction, suppose you don't have an internet connection, the system will actually store those invoices. Until such a time you have a connection, it transmits all of them. Very good. You know why? Mm -hmm. Have we taken into consideration how many of these small businesses have access to this internet now that is obviously being demanded of them to be compliant with this new technology? 
Now, I, I just come to think about it, uh, the in internet coverage in this country, when you think about it, uh, the percentage coverage of internet is actually really good mm -hmm. for this country that even if in some areas it might be intermittent and I come from one of these areas, mm. it is there. It is available so that uh, it's it's able to support business because, as you can see, our communication sector has done really, really well uh, in terms of uh, technology and uh, rolling out uh, solutions so that we can be able to communicate. Um, the requirement for e-teams now extends to even those who are not registered for VAT. And now this goes into small businesses and individuals running small businesses. Those that are registered as a business name, those are registered as small businesses. Those are not even registered. Everybody who's basically trading and will need to file with KRA at some point will need to connect to ETIMS. Am I right? Correct. Even individuals. Um, uh, Eric, I, I think maybe to just put it in perspective, yes. uh, even in individuals have been registered for VAT and are already transmitting invoices uh, to, to KRA. Mm. But... Um, when you look at what the law says mm. is that uh, in fact uh, this month of january is where there was a bit of um, uh, a bit of uh, worry for, for most of the taxpayers because what we said is that effective first january all uh, tax taxable expenditure or ta uh, expenditure that needs to to be accounted for in taxes must be supported with an electronic tax invoice now uh, we are looking at a situation where businesses are uh, doing business with other businesses issuing each other invoices and any time you are doing that the other person we are saying needs an electronic tax invoice yeah. so it, it so happens that in this conversation uh, the, the, the conversation about Mamamboga has come in mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it, 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 it was nice to know that uh, the Mamamboga are actually in fact the, the, the biggest feedback we received was from the manufacturing entities mm. the retail outlets uh, saying the people who supply to them are too small but then we were also happy to see that the smallest of our taxpayers are actually facing up they're actually supporting major industry in this country so what we needed because now we us knowing that they have an impact on what their revenue declaration is or their tax declarations are we 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 thought it's an important sector to actually pay attention to identify what their challenge is because we we uh, definitely need to know uh, more about this impact that actually they have on the on the major industry but then also identify what challenges they might be having in them being able to comply now i've talked about e teams and the solutions that we have in e teams from the feedback once again uh, that we've gotten from uh, these industries saying the the uh, the the entities that supply them are too small they are not able to maintain records of transactions uh, if we can simplify the process better yes we do listened we had and we worked through december mm. uh, through the holidays 25th 24th uh, worked through the holidays to make sure that uh, we have uh, we have stepped into once again a lower level solution that would be fit for even smaller taxpayers. And as we speak right now, uh, 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 we have the first of these solutions actually already hosted on the eCitizen platform, mm. more simplified than eTeams. See, uh, for eTeams, uh, I think maybe most of the concerns were uh, the process of uh, getting on board eTeams, the whole registration sign up, which is necessary so that you can be able to identify the person who is doing business, entering the product, stock management, that uh, businesses with technical know-how are okay with, but the smaller taxpayers might have challenges with. So we, we now have even, uh, we've stepped down a level further so that we have a, an even more simplified solution for these smaller taxpayers, uh, reducing the loop that we had for the other solutions for taxpayers to come on board and just make sure that should this taxpayer now, for example, make their su supplies to a certain exporter, for example, um, their avocados, uh, yep. we've heard a lot about avocados mm. and tomatoes they're actually able to just generate an invoice support that uh, that uh, that supply and enable this person also to support their purchases with an electronic tax you know, so let me first of all just clarify and then i'll tell you a big problem that i have here so what we are saying is small businesses like the mamambogas like um Ndu's duka kiosk that sells shoe polish mm. mukate ngumu soda juice 
juisi ya pakti pakto ko tropical ksl mm. those ones all of them need to have the items yes but again i'm i'm still going to to come back to what we require right now well, right now the ones facing off with other business entities so if mm. ndu's shop mm. is also making a supply to maybe the next primary school uh, they're yes. the ones who also supply milk there yes. they, then ndu at this point first january mm. also needs to onboard e teams very good yeah. because that's what ndu does yeah. you see yeah. she supplies to a primary school there yeah supplies also has another biashara that supplies beans to the next primary school mm. and such and so on and so forth mm. you're supplying somebody and that that person for their own tax uh, purposes they require you to give them an invoice an e teams invoice mm. okay now carry rolled this program since last year mm. and then you received feedback and you're like oh my god You mean you supermarkets are actually supplied by small people? Where have you been, Kerry? As you telling me that Kerry did not know that small businesses supply bigger businesses that supply even bigger businesses. Are you saying that Kerry was not aware that this is how business works in this country? No, Kerry. Or even where? Yeah. So when you are rolling out this program, mm. why did you start with the end? Because the impact of what you are telling the big supplier the big supermarket to do is you're saying you are not going to come and tell me that these are your costs if you don't support them with electronic tax invoices you're basically telling that person that you're not going to accept to be supplied to by a small business that has been supp- supporting you you knew that you knew the impact of that and yet you rolled out this program and now you're telling us you worked over 24th 25th did it to realize that you had to work this and to come up with a solution which you still don't know whether it will work well for that small business mm. where does government operate on live trials because this appears to be like a live trial you know when we were rolling out teams i think uh, that's the feedback we received we were we are doing a live trial mm. and guess what we managed to actually complete the rollout the live so, trial worked yes that live trial worked what what, what we are really saying is that um, what we are introducing is not something that is in existence already it, it's already there because this small taxpayer we are talking about uh, because uh, uh, it's it's easier to focus on uh, in fact uh, the time when we started the rollout i received a lot of smss what about the mamamboga with three avocados uh, 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 a crate of tomatoes so this small tax taxpayer who is already supplying to these retail outlets is already giving them a receipt and they giving them receipts already as we speak mm-hmm. are they giving them receipts they are giving them they receipts. are giving them receipts so yes. when we we say that now we need to formalize this receipts so that they are visible and the most important thing is providing visibility to the revenue authority because what happens when you look at the, those small transactions to the retail outlets through the supermarkets to the to the manufacturing entities they do add up mm. and the manufacturing entities when they are doing their uh, their income tax return they will declare these small transactions when we have gaps as a country or as a revenue administration so that we can really not ascertain what the tax liability of a person is because mm. of the gaps that are there what is the solution to this so this so is for kra then so uh, just starting from the point of visibility of transactions of course it is for kra mm-hmm. and just to to bring us closer home mm. i think when you look at such an implementation it's not um, It's not out of the blue so that we say it's a trial. Let me tell you the neighboring countries and we count all of them around us mm. minus one. All of them have implemented this system from 2012. So okay. Kenya as a country actually had remained behind. So you even had someone to benchmark with. We have. And yet you had to work 24th and 25th. So uh, just to mention it tells also me you didn't benchmark. So 24th okay. and 25th the solution we have none of the East African countries has. Mm. Mm-hmm. So we have a different solution. So what they have they don't have what we we did for the month of December. So um you, you know the issue I'm raising and, and sorry just to harp on this hard like this is you started by saying you as you interact with your taxpayer who with the taxpayer who is your key stakeholder you realize that there are various areas of challenges one of the key challenges is the cost of compliance cost of compliance comes in many ways in time 
in actual cost in technology in knowledge and skill so you have to hire somebody who actually understands this thing so they can log on to your itax for you because you have no clue what this is right and this is what we've seen over time so starting from the premise of cost of compliance includes lack of skill and knowledge and also includes lack of time and um, access to some of these services shouldn't you have started from the other way around by seeing how do we reach out to all businesses small businesses understanding the hustler business mm. the mamamboga all those and then interact with them and see so how do you do your business you do a receipt if i wanted to get access to that receipt what's the best way for me to get access to that receipt would it be to for me to tell you get a smartphone from that smartphone i am now going to tell you to download an app from that app i'm going to be requiring you to uh, load data from that then i'm going to teach you how to be getting a code so that you can access your itax Still coming back to that, I think I yeah. think the mistake we are making is underestimating our taxpayers. When it comes to tax administration is when we say our taxpayers are technologically ta challenged. But the truth is, on the ground, every day, especially since COVID, most of our taxpayers are, have actually, for their own uh, use, have adopted technology in one way or the other. And that's why when you go to banks right now, you don't find the queues you used to find those days when you need to go to the bank and make a withdrawal. You know it's a whole day process because you all have to be there. What happened? The ATMs came along. Yeah. Uh, they can have their mobile banking mobile on their phones. Banking. And they have done this. Yes. They have done, but in other aspects, it is okay. They, they are able to adopt this technology. But when it comes to tax, you are like, oh, no, maybe they can't re generate a receipt. No, do you think there is capacity is? building. <laughs> mm. There is capacity building. When you roll out a new app, like now we are talking about... Maramoja. The Maramoja taxi app. We talk, talk about this is how you download it. It's a blue one. This is how you register. You shall go through this and the other. We don't say from tomorrow you're not going to be able to move from A to B if you don't have the app. So no, what happened? CKRA operates from the other side. From no. the 1st of January, if you don't have an ETA, where we can, if you don't have an ETA. <laughs> because this is another Surely. thing. So you can imagine other small, and I, I want to ask how this would work, because it is one concern that has been raised. So small businesses who would ordinarily invoice another business, we are saying that today you cannot then invoice without having been on E-Teams because the receiving organization will not accept an invoice that is not E-Teams um, compliant. Is that what we are saying as well? No. Mm. Okay, so no, let me just start uh, back. We okay. don't just start like uh, we just wake up and say, Kerry, we are saying from January. Mm. The law came in place in June. Mm. June. And, and what happens as uh, our obligation as taxpayers, as the legislative changes are being done, you are, you are aware, how is it affecting me? By June, I knew housing levy is going to affect me. And, and it did. Mm. So by, by June, by the time the finance bill is being read, you already are actually know where the changes are going to be. And then now we started pacing ourselves from September. We said uh, taxpayers to start onboarding. Unfortunately, they did not because the, the real noise, and I think this is what is happening, started in December. So when we did the stakeholder engagement, yes, we did. We, we have done a lot of stakeholder engagement and still intend to do more mm -hmm. and build capacity and do the training, taxpayer education to make sure that we're able to reach as many of these taxpayers as possible and address whatever challenges that they are having. Uh, we also realized that our taxpayers are also not ready. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think in December we had a public notice out towards the end of December before New Year. New Year we said, okay, we, we will allow you to continue onboarding Till, till end of March. The law has not changed, maybe something to note. The law is still effective first January. Mm. So if you find yourself in a cycle where you already are in deep in these transactions, the best thing to do is on board now so that you don't have a backlog of invoices that come March, now you have to start still inputting in the system because we have said they still have to be transmitted through the system. It's just that we'll give you some bit of concession till March so that you make changes in your system. Uh, try to We try to do as much stakeholder engagement as possible, build capacity as possible, but come March, 
in whichever transactions you'll have transacted outside the system must be visible in the system mm. because these people you are doing business with must still support their transactions with an electronic tax invoice so the taxman is also understanding as mm. much as um, it does look like we've not done our groundwork but even extending um, like saying that we are giving the concession up to march it's because of the feedback on the ground and we come back and we are like it's it's not reali realistic for first january uh, we need to support business continuity we need to have food on our tables because uh, i think the the f uh, farming sector is actually supporting us a lot mm. but we also need to have find ways of still having visibility of these transactions whichever way the objective uh, it needs to be achieved for for the for better revenue administration you know the efforts that carry makes actually very visible carry has done tremendous work in making themselves user friendly to the citizen those efforts are loaded they are good and one sees them but please remember where we are coming from carry as carry okay we are coming yeah we are coming from an era when it was income tax okay and when you got a letter you didn't open it first <laughs> you took a walk made a cup of tea opened it, and then opened it slowly to read it. Now, all that has actually changed tremendously. But I'm saying, when I say, remember where we are coming from, issues of tax are not things that people receive with joy and jubilation. You don't go and celebrate that you've paid taxes. You grit your teeth when you pay taxes. Mm. Okay? <laughs> so, the effort that KRA makes, wonderful as it is, let me urge you, it is asking you to do something fairly inhuman, but it must always continue. Mm. At some point, you always get more and more disciples. People get to feel, actually, look, we can talk to Kerry. We, we, we can have a chat. Mm. We yeah. can do this, and, and, and they can open doors. Now, on this matter, let me change the conversation just slightly. There's a portal, we're electronic, we're 21st century, we're communication age and all that. How useful is it? You know, I've been sitting here trying to figure out how this thing works on my phone. Mm. <laughs> Actually, let's go through it, yeah. all right? Yes. If CTU are one of those small businesses, operating a small business, and they want to onboard onto E-Teams today, what do they do? They need to, for, for them to onboard onto E-Teams, they need to, first of all, for any technology you need to sign up mm -hmm. uh, there's no way you'll just go and find an off-the-shelf uh, uh, solution that you just generate an invoice you don't know where the invoice is coming from yeah. so you need to sign up mm -hmm. you need to identify yourself so the signing up is there yes you need to where? say uh, oh on the items portal you j if you go for example to google just type items portal it okay. will take you to the, the e sign up page e-t-i-m-s yeah okay yeah. So you Google ETIMS, mm. it shows you a it, portal. It, it, it takes you to, to, to the landing e page. Dot yeah. Right? yeah, that one, dot KRA dot geo dot KE. Okay. Mm. And then? And then now you sign up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you do like a service request. Service request means this. Uh, you need to identify yourself as a taxpayer, say what you do. Okay. Uh, because uh, when we talk about, for example, some, some of the solutions, we talked about the online portal. I mentioned that it's only good for services. Yeah. So the, the law firms are the accounting, uh, accounting age, uh, entities. They're all mm. on the online portal. So you need to say exactly what you do. If you're moving goods, then from our end, when we are approving, we are actually approving for a client solution so that you have to have the software installed on your device mm -hmm. so that you can be able to generate invoices. Because with goods comes the stock management, as the inventory management aspect of it okay. that is not on the online services uh, solution. So uh, uh, why I'm giving you the steps, we have sign up, we have a service request, mm. and there's an approval on the KRA side just to make sure that you have placed yourself in the right way. What happens is that we find some people who are trading in goods, they are requesting for the online portal. Mm. By the time we see the application, you're like, no, we are telling you that you need to install the software on your devices. So we, there must be that check on our end. How long does this take? So once somebody right now goes onto Google on their mobile phone, right? They just search eTeams portal. They'll find the eTeams.kra.go.ke. I'm there. So I press sign up. I put in the details. Now it's going to be on the approval side from mm -hmm. the KRA side. How long does that take for KRA to approve? 
uh, KRA, what we've done also, we've enabled all our TSOs, our, our tax service offices, to have we have officers in each each office, each, each station. So sorry, who are actually supporting the e teams implementation, so that as a taxpayer, once you make your application, that the officers in your station should make the, the the approval, and based on their speed, by the way, within a day, actually, you should be onboarded. Okay, you should be onboarded. So will I receive a message to tell me I've been onboarded? You will receive a message that you you you. you text you message. Yes, you'll receive a text message. Okay. Mm. So after that, yeah. after I get the text message, I've been onboarded. You log in again. <laughs> okay. Go back tracking. now to the portal. Yeah. And now instead tracking. of sign up, I log in. Yeah. Okay. And then because you you'll also receive credentials mm -hmm. uh, to be able to to use the the system. Uh, there's a one-time password. There's credentials. So basically, you just log in, and now you can start uh, investing. Okay. Mm. So the next time I supply now to uh, what is Willy Kimani's new Jaza. innovative Jaza. So the new Jaza supermarkets by Willy Kimani, right? So I supply bananas, bananas to Willy Kimani's Jaza. Mm -hmm. I go with my mobile phone and then log in. No, this is what you do. Yeah. When you're supplying to Willy Kimani, you yeah. also are accompanying. He's going to make a payment. You're accompanying your supply with what? Bananas. <laughs> so these bananas. Too. But Banana as a, you know, you're just mm. following the business process. Of course, you know you're going to invoice. So yes. why don't you get ready mm -hmm. and know that I'm, once I'm paid, I have to generate an invoice for okay. him or a receipt. So because usually you'd carry your receipt book. Yes. Usually. Yes. But now you know that you need to have a system solution. So you go ready. You just go ready. But uh, maybe to just mention about the more simplified solution mm. uh, that we have on eCitizen, we are not having VAT registered taxpayers on that solution. Mm. VAT registered taxpayers will stay on our other solutions, teams and e teams. But this one for the smallest of taxpayers, they, them, them they can use. The ones with system to system integration also, mm. they cannot use that solution because they are more advanced. They use the advanced solutions. It's so the one on e citizen. It's it's for people who don't have. It's fairly straightforward. It's, it's straightforward, yes. Don't have actually that one now. The process is automated. There's no approval on KRA side, but you still have to enter your like your PIN, for example, say who mm. you are, and uh, yeah, so so that we can also be able to identify you mm. when the invoices are being transmitted. Hakamba, are we going to see any uh, like campaigns, media campaigns, just taking us step by step onboarding? onto e-teams, step-by-step onboarding onto this e-citizen so we can know. Just like City keeps reminding us, the central bank told us, stop using this old 1,000 note, this is the new 1,000 note. And every day there was a clear message, this is what you do with your old 1,000 note, take it to the bank, get a new one. Are we going to get this kind of messaging to the people? Yes, actually, watch this space starting next week. You'll be seeing a lot of us. I'm already here mm -hmm. starting this campaign. Oh, this is part of it. So yes, it's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of it. I'm already here. But <laughs> from next week, watch this space. We'll actually have a lot of activity on the ground to make sure that we have a lot of information available. But we already have information available uh, on our care website. We oh. have the videos on YouTube oh. that yes, you, you do. can actually. We do. Yes, we you do. do. You do. We do. So, but we you can do, do better, mm. and, and we are going to do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But thank you for coming today. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. keep coming. We'll we'll invite you again as now this is rolled out mm -hmm. so that by March we see whether we all on uh, are on the same page because I don't even know whether I am a VAT registered. I know I'm not I'm not VAT registered should I? Hakamba, thank you for joining us. Asante. She is the chief manager in charge of uh, electronic tax invoice management system at KRA. Her name is Hakamba Wangwe. She's been our guest. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.